World building. Now, let's just run into the surf here because I absolutely love this ship. World building is the most important thing that you will do in this idea process. World building is the act of building a world for your show, shocker. World building as a term has these sort of like fantasy connotations and it really needn't. It doesn't have to be like a, a lacrimose old warlock has taken rather a shine to princesses. It should just be our world but slightly different. It's our world but everyone's a character and they say slightly cleverer things than usual like every show. Um, or it's our world and your self-insert character is really hot. Why not? In my opinion the world is the show. It's the set of rules that allow characters and friction to spontaneously arise. You, you marginalize an ethnic group, you arm the postal service, the sky's full of floating fucking rocks, I don't know. The rules and situations allow your characters to arise and the ideas of your seasons and episodes to spontaneously flourish. It has innate friction and drama. So to approach this first step, you're going to need to know what you personally think is good and cool because your personal tastes will create the thing that you want to see most. Think about what entertains you. Ideally, it should be something that people aren't doing or saying yet. The part of you liking and disliking things, you're not gonna be alone in it, that's the thing. So to use an example, uh, Netflix has this algorithm and it places people into sets and where these people's interests overlap, they will green light shows in the overlap of that Venn diagram. For example, if you have a group of people who are really into sci-fi, but then a similar group of people who are really into political drama, if you pitch them a show about governing a solar system, it might well get green lit because these two groups are saying, feed us something that looks like this. The reason I say this is you are your own algorithm. Inside the alchemy of your tastes is gonna be something interesting to other people. I think one of the most important important takeaways from this is not to write a show based in a genre you don't like. You're not gonna know what works. If you don't like westerns, don't write a fucking western inspired show. You're not gonna know what's good about it. If you love fantasy, play free in the land of elves and goblin goblins because you like it. And to be honest, that's not even hard and fast. If you like a genre, aside from one particular bit of it, like if you like horror, but feel that everything's a bit too insubstantial and there's not enough slice of life, add a family drama, really compelling family drama, and then the horror can just frame it. The first pitch meeting that you will attend will be in front of a committee of your own tastes and best judgment. You have to ask yourself, would I watch this? And remind yourself of that throughout. You also have to ask yourself while we're asking yourself things, would this show just be a kids show if I removed the sex and swearing and drug references or whatever? If the answer is yes, don't panic. All it means is you need to add more adult themes. It doesn't have to be warning label additives. It could be just as simple as adding something that a kid wouldn't necessarily want to watch. Bojack Horseman has an episode called Time's Arrow and in it uh, a dementing heiress gets to see all of her life in montage with parts missing, parts replaced, and it's moving, very beautiful, the last thing a child would ever want to watch. So what I'm saying is if it's not adult-y enough, don't panic, add some themes, some lessons, some things that make you sad and angry in your own life, and Bob's your uncle. And another aside here, while I'm using references. If I'm ever using as reference something that you don't personally like, that's good. You should hate things. They say you should be uh, supportive and loving towards the things that you like rather than just harping on about loathing the things you hate, and I try to live that way personally. But you've got to dislike the shit you hate as much as the loving the stuff you love, I think. Because when you're looking at your own work, and this is jumping ahead a little bit, when you're looking at your own work, how are you going to judge it? How are you going to know if it's working or not if you don't know what you don't like? Purify the work with your hatred is what I'm saying. <laughs> Moving on. Another point to underline is scope. And this is a really big part of world building, for me at least. I want your show to have a nice high ceiling. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. So I was in a pitch recently and they asked me, how will this have 100 episodes? And that's what they're thinking about. And you're going to have to have an answer for that question. And it's something to be solved here at the world building stage. If you're pitching a mini series, this does not apply. And also, I love you and well done. <laughs> but if you're writing a longer show, whether serialized or episodic, you're going to need a nice high ceiling. Now, I'm going to give you an example of a low ceiling. The last animated sitcom in the UK was called Warren United. Of course, everybody knows that. Why wouldn't you have heard of Warren United? Uh, it died immediately, unloved. Warren United was about a man and his wife and daughter and son living in a suburban house. And the dad loves 
soccer slash football so much, it's driving his family crazy. The first episode, he's super fucking into football, and then it's bothering his family somehow. Second episode, whoa, he sure does love his football. I wonder what his family gonna think. Oh, it turns out they're not super plussed about it. Low ceiling. That's not a show, it's an idea. Uh, and you, you, could, you could say to me, well, surely shows are ideas, but no, shows are, are a place in which ideas can happen. If you're writing a longer show, it should come preloaded with longevity. You look at a show like Family Guy or like The Simpsons, you can see these shows have nice big high ceilings. They base themselves in a world like our own, like Warren United did. Uh, it's about family, like Warren United was, but the innate farcical elements in those shows lift the ceiling way higher because we know that anything is possible. You look at a show like South Park, right? South Park has all these farcical elements and it compensates for the fact that every episode is about a fad or piece of news from that week. And we can re-watch those episodes later on because they have longevity. There's a nice high ceiling. Now here it's important to uh, differentiate between an episodic show and a serialized show. Episodic show is like The Simpsons or Family Guy where the beginning of the next episode, nobody knows what happened last week. It doesn't matter if the world nearly ended. At the beginning of this next episode, everything is okay. If you're having a serialized thing, every episode is its own sub-idea leading up to the grand idea of the season. And the season itself is a collection of, of ideas. But you still need a nice high ceiling after that. The world makes your ideas possible. It can just be the energy made between a group of friends, like in Friends. It can be our world, but more corny and awful and cruel, like in Peep Show. Or it can be a whole world, a whole universe in the most total and absolute sense, like Star Trek. And that is my personal sort of poison. Your world should prompt you to immediately think of what ifs. Scooby-Doo had the same episode every episode. So maybe it's not a hard and fast rule, but for me personally, I prefer a nice high ceiling. Don't maroon yourself on an island of your own design, unless your show is about marooning someone on an island you've designed, in which case well done. Like uh, Adventure Time, okay? Adventure Time is like Disneyland. There's a series of zones and you can just go into all the zones and all kinds of wacky things will happen. And so long as you're not bored of the characters, it has this longevity. In Friends, uh, there's so much drama to draw on because the tangle of people's lives is so nuanced. Every character type is a different kind of person that some of us can relate to. So especially if you're making it an episodic sitcom, let your show have a high ceiling. Let it be a fractal pattern that can be endlessly configurable, just grow in every direction forever. Now, start in a universe that's compelling. A compelling world! You gotta have uh, a world that compels people, something that people don't know anything about, okay? So, why is so much uh, uh, television and film time attributed to uh, the Mafia? Everything is about the goddamn Mafia, and the reason is, it's a violent, sexy, money-drenched world that we know nothing about aside from in film, right? We're curious about it. It's a compelling, an unknown universe to us. Consider these setups, right? Uh, a mafia hitman decides that he loves acting and goes to pursue it. A team of out-of-work Hollywood actresses decides to create a wrestling show in the 80s. A nihilist detective in the Deep South is assigned to a, a satanic murder case. We don't know anything about those worlds, and it fascinates audiences. It will lure them towards your show before they've seen anything about it. The compelling world advertises your show to you, in a sense. Because if you hear those concepts, you know, oh, it's about a mafia hitman who decides he wants to be an actor. Immediately we think, God, that's cool. That, that There's so much possible there. There's so much levity contrasted with so much dark. What you need to ask yourself is, what unknown and compelling worlds am I privy to? What have I read about? What have I lived through? Maybe you're super into uh, lightsaber fighting styles. Maybe you're into the SCP Foundation, creepypasta, fiction stuff, anything. If you are privy to a world that most people don't know about, you know why it works. The creator of Barry is an actor. The two women who wrote Glow had a strong interest in the every woman's take on the aftermath of the 1970s women's liberation movement. And then Glow came about. Your viewer wants to peep. They need a peepee -pee hole. You are your viewer's peepee -pee hole. So pick a compelling and unseen world and just hatch a concept in it, okay? So like, uh, it's after the world's ended and the world is flooded and now some kids from Atlantis are exploring the new world, the new world to them. Or uh, Mary Magdalene is piecing together uh, an account of Jesus' life long after he's dead and everyone's lost interest. These are worlds we don't know anything about and you have total freedom to say anything you want in. And if you're saying the right things, people will watch. To sum up world building, you don't need to build an entire world, just a set of rules that govern one. Follow what you love and hate. You have to be your own Netflix algorithm. High ceiling. Let the work have longevity. Let your audience peep. It should be a public look into a private world. 
And now you're ready to make characters. Uh, I like to think my work is character driven. Uh, I think that's the most compelling way to tell a story, but then I would fucking say that, wouldn't I? As usual, if you go over to Patreon, you can see next week's video a week early. Otherwise, I will just see you here in a week.